Welcome back to IDP Plus Trends. I am Johnny. This is Steve with me co-hosting. Um, Steve, how are you doing tonight? I am great. We are talking defense now. This is uh, where it's what we're known, you know, known for. Let's 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 live it up. Offense is great, but let's talk defense. Absolutely. We, last week we had a bunch of free agent, uh, you know, talking points, different guys who switched uh, jerseys, switched teams, and what that meant for their fantasy outlook as far as dynasty and re- on a redraft take as well. This week, our our podcast, we we're going to focus on those defensive. Um, side of the the ball those those signings over the offseason and and tell you what that implies for their fantasy value from a dynasty and redraft perspective before we get started i just want to mention idp plus uh, idp plus.com in the website that we work for idp plus Um, right right now we're running a promo and that's for the first month when you sign up for a month subscription and you use the promo code mock draft you get that first month of content, those uh, articles, videos, all those shorts that, that come up on YouTube, all of our content you will have for just $1 for that first month. So again, if you're not already subscribed, go to idpplus.com and use the promo code mock draft for a one month subscription. All right, going into our linebackers, we're going to start off with some big linebacker moves. We have 16 of them. Uh, a lot of them have value. We wouldn't be talking about them if they didn't hold value. So the first one, we're going to start with a big splash here. Um, signing from Seattle to now Washington, that is Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner, over the last three seasons, he has had over 140 tackles this past season, 2023, with Seattle. 183 tackles, which led the entire NFL, the entire league in tackles. Um, with a reuni- reunition, uh, reunited uh, with, with Quinn here back in his Seattle days to Washington. I'm expecting similar numbers, if not if not uh, falling a little bit short. I know 183 leading the league is a lot to live up to, um, but even if he get over 150, I, I think that's pretty uh, soft, you know, floor. I think he can hit that, and at that point, I think you're still drafting him, and it, at least the redraft is a, a top three to five linebacker. Steve, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, look at how this off this offense is going to be for Washington. You know, they're going to be a team that's going to have to pass a lot. I don't expect. Washington to you know come into the season being a playoff contending team so Bobby Wagner is going to have to be you know really stopping the run right teams are going to be up they're going to run the ball a lot Wagner's going to have a lot of opportunities to get plenty of tackles especially if you're in a high scoring you know team that's got plenty of points towards you know solo or assist tackles and it's an easy, easy transition right Matt Wagner to to Dan Quinn easy for him again He's got some big guys ahead of him that will help him clear up those lanes. I think it's as far as value goes, no miss. Dynasty, you probably want to sell him at this point if you haven't already. But as far as redraft, he's definitely going to still be a strong linebacker to have this season. Absolutely. So Bobby Wagner is still a stalwart. Um, we're not shying away from him over here. And even if you have him in Dynasty, you know, if you're only guaranteed one year, it should be a great year. So start him with confidence. Um, even if in a startup for Dynasty, don't be afraid to take him because uh, a lot can shift f- from year to year and, in, in, you know, in a linebacking position, whether it be wh- who signs, who gets traded for. So uh, just because a guy's young at 23 and had a good year doesn't mean he's going to be great until 33. So Bobby Wagner still held it in the highest regard. Another guy we're going to talk about, uh, another older player over 30. He's 31 right now, and that's Jordan Hicks. He got signed to the Browns. Uh, looks like he's going to play the middle there. He's o- over the last five seasons. He's had at least a hundred or more tackles this past year in 2023, 107 tackles in just 13 games played um, last year, 2022 in a full, ga- full 17 games. He had 129 tackles. I like Jordan Hicks a lot. I think he's a good, uh, not only a good get for, or for Cleveland, but also uh, for your IDP lineups, especially in uh, redraft. He's going to be somebody who I think is, a little bit overlooked as an aging linebacker coming off an injury plagued season. Uh, I think if he would have stayed in Minnesota, you know, he would probably be, get a little bit more respect than, you know, in the IDP community, he goes to a different team, maybe a little bit of unknown there, but I still like Hicks a lot. I think at least for one year, you know, if you're in a startup and uh, he's a, maybe you, you, you get past top 20 linebackers at that point, I think Jordan Hicks could have value. Steve, you still like Hicks in Cleveland? 
Yeah, I mean, the only issue that was last year was just he missed, what, four games, um, which I think he could have finished even stronger um, when he was, you know, for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And realistically, when those that time he missed, you gave Ivan Pace a chance to kind of shine. Um, and he's essentially replacing, you know, Anthony Walker that – was for Cleveland that also had a lot of serious injuries that he just couldn't stay healthy. So this is a good move for Cleveland. Good move for, again, your redraft or dynasty. He's a, he's a guy who's going to get you at least a hundred tackles. Realistically, I think he can get even more than that. He could probably get you that 130 to 140 range. Like he was close to in, in 2022. So it's a good move for him. Again, aging linebacker like Wagner, if you're in a dynasty and you're in a win now, great to keep. If you have a younger roster trying to rebuild, someone you could probably get rid of at a decent price to somebody who may have a contending roster just to kind of, again, get a little bit of youth for your team. Absolutely. Yeah, Hicks still has value. Still like him for Cleveland. So don't be uh, scared that he's changing you know, uniforms. He's still going to be a solid tackler in the middle there and an asset for your IDP team. Moving on, we have Aziz Al Shair, 26 years old. Aziz actually had the best year of his career. Uh, his fifth season was his best career in 2023, 163 total tackles. He had two sacks as well, which, you know, coming into this, this season in his first four years, he only had two sacks. So he matched that in this uh, standout year for himself. Had a really nice season, was more of a, a run, predominantly a run stuffer in Tennessee. I think that's what we can expect him to be in Houston, too, where he's going. Uh, they, I do have Christian Harris there. They do have Henry 2020. So I, I do think, you know, there's uh, not the safest ground. He might, if he struggles, you know, might have competition. We saw what Blake Cashman, Christian Harris, P- Perryman, the shakeup they went through this year. But I think he's brought here to start. I'm pretty confident um, with the reunion with him and D'Amico Ryans. I know Ryans coached him in uh, – San Fran. I'm pretty excited to see his his uh, you know usage continue to be as high as it was in Tennessee. And I I don't know that he quite hits 163 there, but if he gets 150, I think that's real realistic expectations. Steve, what do you think about Al Shair? Yeah, I actually think this is great for him. You know, again, like you mentioned, D'Amico Ryan's is his head coach now. Um, that is huge, and there's a reason why he brought him in. I think he just he saw you know four years of him there, and or almost four years, so he saw plenty of action. It was tough for him in San Fran to really kind of become something, right? Um, so this is a great opportunity. He had that one-year rental um, in Tennessee, and that was his prove-it moment, and he did. He did a great job. He proved that he could be a, a all-down starting linebacker. Um, and again, put up plenty of tackles for your, your IDP league. So it's a great opportunity. I think this is going to be a good move for him, good move for the Texans. I think the Texans, again, like we mentioned before, absolutely – uh, killed it this offseason so far in the free agency. So I think this is a good move. I, he was one of my favorite players last year. I had him in a lot of my redrafts, and I have a few shares of him in a couple of my dynasties, but not many. And uh, honestly, I would love to get him if I could. Yeah, for sure. Not a, not a heavy price tag with Aziz Al Shire. Doesn't have really the name brand like, you know, maybe a Fred Warner, a Zaire Franklin, one of those guys. So definitely still flying under the radar, but 163 tackles in Tennessee last year. Don't overlook him. It's not uh, out of the question to have a repeat performance. He kind of just got his starting gig in Tennessee. So it was really nice to see him put the pieces together. Uh, Another younger linebacker here we have, Jordan Brooks from Miami, 26 years old as well. He got signed to a three-year deal. I really wish Jordan Brooks would have stayed in in, uh, Seattle because I know what he can do in Seattle. And he was a little bit injured this season. He dealt with an ankle injury towards the end of the year. Still had a solid year. Still at 111 uh, combined tackles over 16 games, even though the 16 is a little bit misleading. He was nagging through a lot of those 16. So still 111 tackles. Uh, this is a player who two years ago at 24 years old on that same Seattle team led the league in tackles in the NFL with 184 uh, and then 161 last year. So a high tackle guy that that fits my mold. I like that. And, and you know, some some critics will say that they'll give him credit to the point that uh, he actually had his career high in sacks this year. So as, as much as people will talk, the tackles were down. He did um, get a big increase in, in sacks. In fact, he only had two in his first three years. And now in his uh, fourth year, he has four and a half in this year alone. So big up up uh, swing there in, in sacks. And I, I think, you know, as far as Jordan Brooks the type of player he is, 
I think he's there in the middle, um, you know, cleaning up the place. I think he'll get a lot of tackles still. Not really sure if that's sack floor, if that four, four and a half, if that's a floor or that's a ceiling. I wouldn't really count on it, you know, moving forward. I don't know if that was just kind of a different scheme that they were doing over there in Seattle. I'm kind of surprised by it. But, uh, you know, if you can get over 115, 120 tackles and four to five sacks, that's a great, you know, problem to have. So I'm still high on Brooks. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I do like – Brooks, he obviously shined that one year without Wagner. He did well the year before when he had Wagner on his side. Um, he looked a little bit slower than I had anticipated uh, last season. I think a lot of it had to do with that ankle situation. You could kind of see it. Uh, but he still produced really well. Again, if you're in a, a, a scoring system that does give you you know, high points for sacks, turnovers, things like that, then obviously Brooks still had strong value, even though he didn't have as many tackles as he did the year before that. I am curious how he plays in for you know in this situation with Miami. I wish Miami had kept Wilkins because obviously they've got to fill that hole and again trying to allow big bodies to get to the offensive line so he's not getting touched a lot from those guys. Um, as long as they could kind of fill those spots, I think Brooks is in a good situation to again bring a lot of value for this Dolphins team and your IDP team, of course. So you're like me; you're not too worried about that injury and the down year, right? No, I mean, he's still young. He's 26. He's got this, man. I mean, the injury obviously showed, you know, showed up in the film. But again, I think a lot of it was just that you're pushing through, you're dealing with it. You can't be explosive with, with an ankle injury like that. Um, mm -hmm. Could he have rested himself? Sure. And probably had a better ending to the season. But I'm not overly concerned. He can push right through this. Yeah, I agree, man. 26 years old, still young. Better days ahead. Jordan Brooks, still like him a lot. Um, moving on, we're going back to Washington here. Frankie Louvu from Carolina, he got signed to a three-year deal. They gave him some money here in Washington. He's 27 years old. Uh, they have the aforementioned Wagner and also Jamin Davis to compete with. Uh, I liked it before they got Wagner. You know, I thought that he would have a, a, a good opportunity to kind of reprise that uh, hybrid role. You know, he was somebody who has over 110 tackles the past two seasons and over five sacks the past two seasons. So he's kind of like a, 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 you know, a fluky linebacker here where he does both. Um, I'm not sure, you know, now with this Wagner signing, they still have Davis. I, you know, I'm not saying that Davis is guaranteed anything. I think this might be his last year too, but still they have young guys here. You know, they have a couple young guys behind uh, Lou Vu. And then they have veteran uh, Wagner. I, I don't think that the, the tackles – uh, ceiling is once what you know once is is what it once was before they had signed Wagner. Now they sign Wagner. Uh, I'm kind of jumping ship here as of right now on Luvu. I know that he can still have a lot of potential, but to get over five sacks and 110 tackles, I think that's a lot to ask for. Uh, maybe Dan Quinn gets the best of him here in a new scheme, but uh, I, I expect these numbers to come down a little bit, Steve. I think you'll contrast me on this one. What do you say? Yeah, so it is mixed. Um, if you're going off of a, a higher, again, scoring system based off sacks and turnovers and things like that, I think Luva's value is still going to be pretty strong. Um, you know, I'm I'm a Cowboy fan who watched Dan Quinn and his defense and what he did with his players. Luvu, I think, would fall into that Micah Parsons role where he's going to be the hybrid. He's going to be outside. He's going to be inside. He'll play linebacker. He'll play defensive end. And I think that's where he's going to shine right you had what five and a half sacks and seven sacks so like he can get to the quarterback yes you're correct he's not gonna have as many tackles had they not signed wagner i think luvu's value would have been higher but i'm still not jumping ship from luvu because of the potential of where they're gonna put him he's gonna be the outside guy he's gonna be in passing down situations where he can have the chance to go after the quarterback and i think that would be his biggest thing now if your scoring is really solely based off the tackles sure Luvu's value is going to be more for deeper leagues, maybe later in redrafts to kind of fill in for certain bye weeks. But if you're going to get opportunities to get fumble forces, recoveries, interceptions, sacks, I think Luvu's value still will be really strong. They paid him, they're going to use him, and I think he'll be good. Yeah, I agree. They paid him for a reason. So he's going to be on the field for sure. But yeah, yeah me, I'm a high tackles guy. But yeah, I think consensus, those, those kind of come down. Um, he had a better opportunity for that in Carolina. But definitely can, is, is still a, a freak athlete and a good uh, player for a football team and your IDP lineups. So moving on, we got another 27-year-old Blake Cashman going to Minnesota on a three-year deal. Um, they lose Hicks, but they sign Cashman, so I expect him to kind of fill the Hicks role there next to Ivan Pace. And 
I kind of like these two. I think they're flying under the radar, especially Cashman. I think uh, what what uh, you know Pace has done end of his year, end of his rookie year, he kind of came on strong. And I think as as much as his own percentage was low in Yahoo and Sleeper, I think uh, you know he'll be more of a household name next year. But Blake Cashman, it was nice to see him put the pieces together. I like this guy as a prospect coming out of the draft and when he was uh, played sparingly in New York for the Jets. But there were some flashes there. I mean, this season we finally saw him put the pieces together. He had a couple double-digit tackle games, uh, only 14 games played, but 106 combined tackles with two sacks. And and I want to say, too, that those numbers don't really get a fair representation of how well he played because of how you know muddled the uh, – Houston linebacking cores were deployed. They had um, Denzel Perryman, who was a starter there. Then Henry 2020, you know, started taking snaps. And um, Blake Cashman had a couple really good games, was a household name there in IDP. And then the next week, we kind of saw him, you know, come back to the bench. So uh, a lot of shakeup there was what happening last year in Houston. I think if he gets a mainstay role, which I expect in Minnesota, I think he can, you know, really improve on those 106 tackles, maybe offer 120. Um, somewhere north of 120 tackles. And he's not a complete just, uh, you know, tackle or nothing kind of play. He did have two sacks. He does get tackles for loss. So I think he's a well-rounded player and somebody who I'm going to be uh, trying to poach next year when it comes to, especially in redraft. Um, you know, maybe in Dynasty you have him. You know, you're, you're he's not old. He's 27 years old. But I think for right here, right now, this is a great redraft get, Steve. What do you think about Cashman? No, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm not really sold on Cashman. I know he had a, obviously a solid year last year. Um, I, th- I think it's more contributed to what D'Amico was able to do in that defense. I think D'Amico gets, should get a lot of that credit. So I'm not necessarily 100% sold. I would have loved Ivan Pace to actually have the opportunity to really get the start. And I'm curious how Minnesota is going to play out these linebackers because you got right, Cashman, you got Pace. We'll see if he even gets the starting position. You still got Van Ginkle. Who knows what they do again, go into the draft. I don't know. The linebacker room seems a little bit more unclear for me um, before this you know, off season really kind of fills out. Cashman looks to be the starter just because they brought him in. He's going to have the opportunity and probably have the best opportunity for tackles. Um, I just, I would have loved to have seen pace really get that spot. I think he shined really, really well last season. He looks good. I understand he's an undersized linebacker. So I get why they were kind of worried. And you bring in a guy who's like 6'1", 240, and he did well. I just – I think I give more credit to D'Amico than I do Cashman. And, you know, if we're in the same league, Johnny, then you probably pick him up, and I may look like a fool, and I'm okay with it. I'll live with it. But I'm not 100% sold on him right now. For sure. And there's there's holes, you know, not the track record. He wasn't a starter till this year. Um, you know, obviously, for whatever reason, wasn't a starter the whole way through the year. So – there's red flags, absolutely, but I do think he has upside and you know, a good player when he's on the field, a good bet to get you tackles. Um, moving on, we're going to stay in Minnesota, however. A 28-year-old uh, Andrew Van Ginkle, you had mentioned, signed a two-year deal in Minnesota. Um, I thought it was it was all fine and dandy, good signing, but then they went and got Grenard. We'll talk about him later, too. So I'm kind of torn here. I mean, I don't know what Andrew Van Ginkle's role is going to be. Is, is he going to be somebody who's going to give me that – kind of a poor man's Frankie Louvu, a nice blend of tackles and sacks, or is, you know, is he going to be stuck on that line and it, are the tackles going to kind of fade? I mean, I know last year they had Daniil Hunter there. Um, hopefully he can kind of play a Daniil Hunter-esque uh, role. Obviously they're not the same player, but Daniil Hunter had no problem racking up tackles as well as sacks there. So I hopefully that that is the case with Van Ginkle. Um, like I said, though, I, I'm not really sure. Hopefully you can give me some clarity on the situation here. Uh, they signed – Grenard there. So, you know, what is Van Giggle's role? Do you think going to be here, Steve? Yeah, it makes me wonder. So I think, I think the thought was Van Ginkle was going to be, I guess the hybrid role and, you know, linebacker slash defensive lineman and then Grenard's there. I think with losing Daniel Hunter, I could see it where it is a committee aspect to replace Hunter's value. Um, I could see where they use both Van Ginkle and Grenard on the line, maybe take one off, maybe play both, right? Like use the talent, put Gink, you know, you know, get Ginkle on, on the outside at the linebacker spot, Grenard on the line, they both can rush or, you know, flip them around. I mean, you have that ability to do that. Obviously, you know, from the dolphin perspective where he came from, 
you know, he wasn't utilized, I thought, as often as he should have been. I think they kind of held him back um, because he did show plenty of signs to be a good playmaker. Um, you know, being it's only, what, five years in the league, he obviously was a little bit older player coming out of college. Um, so his age does scare people, but he's only played five years. So he's not like Warren Torn type of player. So as far as dynasty, he's still somebody I'm holding on to. I had him in two leagues last year. And he would show up and not, not a consistent enough, but I think in this role, you know, I'm curious how they're going to play him. I would love my perfect scenario is again, you're going to have Cashman out there. You'll have maybe pace on the outside, even though not a great spot. Um, he'll probably be the one losing his job. Ginkle on the outside. And then opposite of that, it's going to be Daniel Hunter. And I think that's going to be the best way to play it. Awesome there. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve, for that insight. Hopefully, Gink Van Ginkle has some uh, similar value to what he had in Miami. He was a good player there. Uh, hopefully, he retains that. Moving on, we have another younger linebacker uh, moving to Tennessee, and that's Kenneth Murray, 25 years old. He got a two-year deal. All they have really is Jack Gibbons uh, to compliment him. I, I wouldn't even say there's really any competition for him at this point. So he is deemed a starter as of right now. I am a little bit intrigued. Um, to me, I, I wouldn't have him – uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable with him as like if I'm going to start up as my second linebacker, I'd say third to fourth. Um, probably somebody who can get later in a startup because he's a little bit unproven, although he is uh, still young at 25. And I, like I said, somebody who I'm not really going to be counting on um, to be a LB2 or higher. But I do see value, you know, at back end of redrafts. If you're looking for a second linebacker, somebody with upside. We just had mentioned Aziz Al Shair. Had 162, I want to say 162 or three uh, tackles there for uh, Tennessee as the middle linebacker last year. Kenneth Murray had 107, and also his rookie year he had 107. Then 2021 and 22 were kind of uh, injury plague. So number one, I'm worried about the injuries. Is he going to, you know, be able to play all 17? But uh, I, you know, if I had to say whether he's going to be closer to that 107 or closer to the 163. I'd say somewhere in the middle with this guy, Kenneth Murray. I don't think he's, you know, somebody who's, uh, um, you know, the b best prospect, the, the highest potential, but I do think he's still young and maybe getting better. Uh, was a good prospect coming out of college. So I think he has that going for him. And, you know, right in the middle, maybe 130 tackles and not offering much else, not ha having much, uh, many sacks or tackles for loss. I think 130 tackles for this guy, Kenneth Murray, seems reasonable. How about you, Steve? Yeah, so in my leagues, he would be considered like an LB3, LB2 potential. Um, he's got a better position now because he really does have the opportunity. I mean, remember, he's a first-round pick, so his draft capital is still there, right? Anytime you got a first-round player, um, yeah, he, he still has the chance and opportunity to really show why he was a first-round talent. Is he going to replace Aziz? I don't think so, but I do think he's going to have higher than 107. He's not a big playmaker. He's just more of a traditional great linebacker where it comes to i'm going to stop the run make my consistent tackles things like that he's not going to get you sacks he's not going to get you interceptions he's not out there to cover you know slot receivers or you know really athletic tight ends he's just there to make consistent tackles to stop the run and so you know you think about this division that they're in um you know going from uh, you know la to tennessee well you've got travis Etienne. you got to worry about you've got you know damian pierce and joe mixon now you got to worry about you know, got Jonathan Taylor. So there's a good running teams that he's going to play against. So I do expect him to have good value in a traditional scoring league where you're going to get plenty of points for tackles. I think he actually can be a LB2 with LB1 potential uh, just because of you look at that landscape of teams they're going to play against. You still have younger quarterbacks, right? You know, you got Stroud, you got Lawrence, you got Anthony Richardson. Running the ball is going to be very important to all three of those teams, and I think that will be big for him. Absolutely. Yeah, he'll have opportunity there in Tennessee, no doubt. So Kenneth Murray, don't forget about him. He's a cheap price tag right now. Moving on to uh, Pittsburgh, my hometown, we got a 24-year-old Patrick Queen. Love that signing for the Steelers. Don't see him make moves like this often, so I'll enjoy it while it lasts. Um, they also have Cole Holcomb and Landon Roberts, but I think Patrick Queen's the number one here overall in the middle. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I will say about the Steelers is um, going back to, I want to say, Brian Shazier and maybe Devin Bush's uh, rookie year. They really, between those years, haven't really had a mainstay fantasy uh, 
linebacker. So, uh, you know, bad juju for this one. Uh, I, you know, hopefully I think if there's somebody to break the mold that it is Queen. I think he's that type of player. He's the real deal. 24 years old. You know, he's um, somebody who does it all. He has a plethora of tackles, 133 last year, 117 the year before, 106 as a rookie. The sacks have always been there. As a rookie, he had three. Uh, last year, he had five. And then, you know, well, two years ago, I should say he had five. And then 2023, last year, three and a half. Um, you know, Steve, I'll, I'll say this. I, I, if, I were, if there was a category to fall, you know, the numbers I expect to drop, uh, I expect it to be in sacks. I don't think he'll be able to get to three, you know, the three and a half to five area. They have Watt, they have Highsmith. So uh, right now I, I'd say that the tackles maybe stay the same here in Pittsburgh around 130, 140, which is solid. It's great. Um, but I do think that, you know, it's not like we're talking about somebody who's going to go from 20 sacks to five, you know, if, if, he goes from three and a half sacks to one or two. He's still a you know back end uh, LB one sturdy LB one in my book. I still like Queen a lot, but I do expect the sacks to fall if any uh, counting stats. How about you, Steve? I actually love the signing of Queen. Um, you know, I I was hoping he would land in Dallas because um, we knew he wasn't going to stay in Baltimore. So I love this move. I think it's a great move for for Pittsburgh. They've been missing a really good middle linebacker. Let's be honest, right? Like they haven't had that true middle linebacker for a while. And Pittsburgh was known for linebackers. You know, I could go out on a whole list of linebackers that that played there. And, you know, this is a good signing for him. He, exactly not going to be a needed in the pass rushing aspect, right? He might, if a quarterback's scrambling, he can run in, maybe sneak a, a sack here or there. But he, that's not what you're going to be asking of him. You're going to be asking of him to stop the run, cover some some tight ends, maybe a slot player, and that's it. And that's all he needs to do. And I think he has value there. He's quick. He's got great hips. He moves well. Um, and I think he learned a lot from Roquan. Um, I think that was actually a huge signing for Baltimore. And I think that actually was huge for Patrick. And he's got a lot to prove. Like he, you, If you watched any of his conferences, like he, I know he was under Roquan's shadow, and I think he wants to prove that he was not a one-and-done. Like He is a true, legit middle linebacker, and I'm, I'm excited for him. Yeah, no doubt. I like Patrick Queen a lot. I'm not fading him. I'm still treating him like he was on the Ravens value-wise. Uh, I think he's offers a, a great tackle floor uh, and, a, and a high ceiling, too, at the same time. So excited to see what Patrick Queen bring, brings to Pittsburgh. Um, moving on, we have Josie Jewell going to Carolina on a three-year deal to be next to Shaq Thompson uh, in the middle there of Carolina's defense. We talked about Luvu leaving. Um, but I just think that, you know, one thing about Carolina is we do know that they're going to be bad. And I do think that, uh, you know, uh, I'd say Jesse Jewell offers a higher uh, tackle floor even than Luvu. Luvu, granted, is probably the better play in, uh, you know, splash play, big play scoring because of the sacks yeah. and the, you know, big plays that he makes. But Josie Jewell, I think, is a sure tackler. Um, last season with the Broncos, even though he was injured in 15 games, I'm sorry, 16 games. He had 108 tackles the season before in just 13 games. He had 128 tackles. So I think he gets back to 120 here in Carolina. Um, he did have three sacks and two and a half last season. So somebody who's not a stranger to sacks, but you're certainly not counting on there. Um, you know, you don't need the sacks to me if you're ro rostering Josie Jewell. You know his line of play, and that's tackles. And uh, I think if he can get somewhere around that Kenneth Murray, 120, 130, I think that's what I'm thinking for uh, Josie Jewell. You agree with that, Steve? Yeah, good good linebacker too. Um, consistent, you know, tackler. Injuries will be something you have to kind of. Hopefully, he doesn't have in 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 you know Carolina. I do like him there. I do think this is going to be good for him. Good for the defense. Um, they need somebody who's going to be there that's going to help be that sure tackler. Um, he's not going to wow you. He'll fall down in most drafts, which is okay. You could probably even pick him up on waivers when you know redraft season starts let's be honest like that's not gonna be a name you're gonna recognize and want on your team um but he had value last year right he did he, he did well i still like singleton better when he was you know uh, his his linebacking partner but um jewel's gonna get you potential lb2 i think he's more of an lb3 which is gonna allow you to get him at a probably a good value you know where obviously we talked highly of patrick mcqueen patrick queen's gonna go higher he might be a little more expensive to get, you know, as far as your draft position and or if you're trading for him. So Jules, a nice little sneaky player, get you 120 tackles, maybe a sacker here. He's good at creating fumbles. 
again, some big plays and maybe an interception or two. Yeah, Jesse Joel, solid player. I agree. I think Singleton, you know, is preferred player in Denver. I'd rather have him. He was a better linebacker. But, yeah, Jesse Joel, solid opportunity for tackles here in Carolina. Bad team. Going to be down a lot, getting ran on a lot. So, Jersey Joel, hopefully he stays healthy, puts the pieces together. 120, good bet to get there. Um, moving on, we have another older linebacker, Eric Kendricks, going to your Dallas Cowboys. Yep. Uh, 31 years old. Last season he had a really nice year, 117 tackles in only 15 games played. Um, he's only one year removed from 137 tackles in 2022. Uh, played all 17 games that year. Hasn't really had many injuries, you know, kind of a, a solid player, not really worried about injuries, but maybe at 32 is, it, you know, 31, 32 different story. Um, I expect the, the tackles to be there. I think he'll be the number one in the middle there, kind of supplant uh, Damon Clark. I think 117 tackles, if that's what he gave me, what he gave me last year, I'm fine with that. That's certainly uh, LB2 status, you know, low end LB2. He's, He's somebody who, who can – he's no stranger to getting at the quarterback. He had three and a half sacks last year and seven tackles for loss, and that was kind of his M.O. over his career. Um, only one year he didn't have uh, a sack, and that's from 2015 to 2023. So um, most of the time he's getting at the quarterback, I, I, you know, three and a half times last year. I don't expect to get any more than that. Um, you know, I think the tackles will be there, Steve. Do you think that we see uh, Eric Kendricks continue to pursue the quarterback, or, or, or are those days over? Um, it's interesting, right? I look at this. I know it's probably gonna take a, I could talk about this for like an hour. Um, you know, you, you have him coming in, replacing Van Der Esch, who's now obviously recently retired due to the injuries. Van Der Esch was never a high tackling machine. That was not what his game was about. Um, Eric Kendricks, I think is a better linebacker overall when it comes to that. I do think he's more athletic. Um, but my concern with this, the situation for Eric is he is going to be drafted, I think, fairly high and mostly just because ex they're expecting him to be the number one, which he will be. But that defensive line is just getting shredded right now. They don't have, besides Mozzie Smith, really nobody that's a big run stuffer. And that was the concern last year for Dallas is that nobody was able to plug the hole to allow the linebackers to actually make stops. And realistically, everyone runs to the outside to where Micah Parsons is because He's not there to stop the run. He's there to make the big play on the edge. And, you know, I'm hoping Eric Hendricks can move like he was when he was younger because that's where he's going to have his biggest growth. Is he going to get 120 tackles? It's a good chance. A linebacker like that has not happened for Dallas in a while. Last time we had a really good IDP linebacker uh, was what? Sean Lee, and he couldn't stay healthy, right? So it uh, linebackers for... Dallas worries me. Micah's only value is because he can be hybrid and he does have value in the defensive line side. But um, even as a Cowboy fan, I haven't touched a, a defensive player on Dallas in a while, um, except for last year when I picked up Bland off waivers. I feel you, man. Yeah, there's a lot lot to, going on there in Dallas. Uh, hopefully he can get at the quarterback a little bit too, but definitely a, a good floor player. You know, you know what you're getting. Um, I like Kendricks myself, and I think that's a good landing spot for him is right uh, in Dallas there. So hopefully he brings you some good luck there. Um, moving on, we have 26-year-old Devin White goes to Philly. Uh, on one hand, he had a really down year. He ha only had 83 tackles, two and a half sacks, got benched. Really, you know, spiral uh, of what's been a great career so far. The three years before last year, 20, 21, and 22, had uh, 124 tackles or more with three and a half sacks or more. Uh, he was a pro bowler in 2021. So it really has kind of fallen since then. Uh, I'm excited for this, you know, to see him land in Philadelphia. They only have N'Kobe Dean there. Um, I don't think there's much playing time com conversation there. I think that's a, a, a sure thing. He's going to get a lot of playing time. And I think this is a good chance to rebound his career. I'm not going to, you know, draft him as my top linebacker with confidence. But I tell you what, as a third linebacker in a in a redraft or a startup for Dynasty, he's still young, um, twenty six years old. So I think there's a lot of uh, potential here with Devin White. Do you think that uh, you agree he's coming back to his better days in Tampa Bay, like, or is is this year for you what what he's going to give you next year? Yeah, I don't know because I I, I wasn't sold on him last year. You kind of see you kind of saw what was happening in Tampa. 
Um, I have no idea what the hell Philly's doing. Like, you've got a very talented team, but defensively, they just got shredded. Um, I'm curious how that's going to play out this season and what they end up doing and how their scheme is going to be. So I'm more of a wait and see aspect. I, I'm not touching a linebacker from Philly. Um, maybe if it's a deeper league and I need to fill and Devin White obviously has potential. He's a, he is a good playmaker when he's healthy and he's really on his A game. But um, I don't know. I don't. I just don't trust this whole defense yet. I don't trust how they're going to play. I don't trust. I mean, really. Um, there's a uh, one player we're going to talk about a little, li- little bit later. I don't mind picking up, but I don't even trust Philly's players on the defensive side when it comes to my IDP league. If I can prevent it, no, I get that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't start him with confidence either or pick him up expecting you know the, the yeah. best days ahead. But uh, at the same time, somebody's got to make some tackles there in Philly. And if the status quo, maybe they draft somebody, but Nicobe Dean doesn't do it for me. And I think you know, Devin White will have plenty of opportunity. We'll see what he what he uh, does with that opportunity because he had it in Tampa Bay too, but for whatever reason, you know, uh, didn't work out this past year. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on him if he's uh, the last linebacker and you can afford a linebacker. I think it's a good shot uh, shot in the dark there to take on Devin White, only 26 years old. So um, another linebacker who's a little bit younger, um, Cody Barton. We saw him have a nice year for Washington. He's going to fill in for Josie Jewell next to Alex Singleton there in Denver. Um, 27 years old. I, I like him as a starter here. Cody Barton, you know, if you if there's two sides, he's like Jacqueline Hyde. If you go on Twitter or X uh, and you search Cody Barton, you're going to see him get burned and, you know, him not being able to cover or missing, you know, open tackles. But the stats don't lie with uh, Cody Barton. He had 121 tackles last season, um, 2022 with Seattle, 136. He did get two sacks in 2022, but not uh, certainly not his mainstay. He only has two in his five-year career. Um, so Cody Barton, to me, if, if you're searching for tackles, offers a, a great ceiling for that. We saw him, I think, had in his last five games uh, to the regular season, I think he had double-digit tackles in all five of those games. So definitely somebody in the right situation. He gets opportunity, playing opportunity. I think that you know he's a good bet to get tackles. Uh, I'd like to see him eclipse that 121. I mean, he only he only started 13 games this year. Next year, if he goes to Denver and starts a full 17, I think it's more towards that 136 range. Maybe it's even higher. You know, I, I'm not sure um, that I'd be banking on that. But another when we talk about uh, Kenneth Murray, Josie Jewell, boom, here's another name. Co- uh, Cody Barton, add him to the list. A player who's a solid tackler who I think it can be a solid LB2 in fantasy. What do you say, Steve? Um, I probably have a little bit lower than LB2. I think I'm more in the LB3 status. Uh, Singleton obviously is the linebacker to go for when it comes to Denver. Um, I like him a lot more. Barton, like you mentioned, showed flashes. He is a consistent tackler, but there are times he is not going to have any value when it comes to the big play um, and making you know some interceptions and, and just getting after the quarterback or anything like that. So I think he's... Um, I think he's a little bit better than Josie Jewell was last season. I think he has the potential. So he had Jewell last year. You're, I do think you're getting an improvement. Um, I do think there's value there. But um, redraft, I'm probably holding off. Dynasty, again, if you're in a little bit deeper, I think you'd be a nice little LB3 or you know maybe with some LB2 potential. Absolutely. Cody Barton, solid player. On a good day, LB2. True, more of an LB3 for right now. But, yeah, I, I do think the uh, pairing of Singleton kind of saps a little bit of upside for him. I'd agree with that. You know, it's a better recipe where he was in Washington, you know, not not having a guy like Singleton there. So it might be a little bit tougher for him, I'd agree. Um, moving on, we have an older linebacker here. Just got signed to San Francisco. was a very fruitful um, IDP play just a few short years ago. Uh, even last year, one healthy. Devondre Campbell. He's 30 years old, going to San Fran, as I mentioned. We're talking about a guy who could not stay healthy the past two seasons. This past year, 11 games played, did have 75 tackles. Uh, 2022, 13 games played, 96 tackles. But just before that, 2021, he had 146 with two sacks in a full season. Um, 20 or 2019, dating back even that long, uh, he had 129 tackles in 16 games played. Somebody who can get at the quarterback a little bit, if he can give me two sacks uh, again, that's really nice. I'll, I'll take that. Not not a high volume, um, you know, 
quarterback hit guy, but I think Devondre Campbell here in San Francisco kind of re rejuvenates himself. Uh, I know they lost Green Lodge, that Achilles in the Super Bowl. So I'm excited for John Devondre Campbell. I think he can be a solid LB2 here um, next to Fred Warner. I think there's ample opportunity for him for as far as tackles. And the key thing is, is he, is he able to stay healthy? I'm not sure. Um, 24 games played out of 34 the last two seasons doesn't really cut it, doesn't assure me, but I'm willing to take a chance on him as a LB2, LB3. Steve, what do you say about Campbell? Yeah, I mean, it's. I thought it was a dumb move from San Francisco. You go from one injured linebacker in Greenlaw to another injured linebacker, but I get the potential, right? He, he, he has shown flashes. He's only really had that 2021 season that really was just like, wow. Like, he kind of came off – and you're like, oh, and then you thought, I'm sure like many people, I did it. I was a fool drafted him the next year and you got burned. So um, good move for him. I think it is helpful because now you're not having to be like the guy you've got, you know, Fred Warner is going to be the one really taking on a lot of uh, the responsibility and being the guy Campbell can fill it nicely for that Greenlaw role until Greenlaw comes back. If he comes back, hopefully. Um, so he's going to fill in nicely for that, where he's going to be a, a really good linebacker two for this team again i'm not touching him at this point i've been burned with him before he can't stay on the field his injuries are just too much of a concern for me especially at an aging linebacker um but you know if he plays a few games here or there he might be somebody who gets you double digit performances because he can like he has that type of game like he's gonna have a game where he's gonna get you 10 tackles maybe a sack a pass deflection you're like holy cow you just helped me win this week but he's going to have that game where he's going to show up two tackles, three tackles, and that's it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm worried with him. Um, I thought it was a bad move from San Francisco. You know, you, you've got to replace Greenlaw, who was a great linebacker for them. I just didn't think it was smart, but he is going to have value because, again, Warner is a, amazing. He's a beast, and now less pressure for Campbell, and I think it's perfect for him. I agree. Less pressure. Um, hopefully you can be a nice number two there, stay healthy. I think Devondre Campbell, if you're in a deeper, you know, uh, IDP league, he's somebody to monitor going forward. Uh, moving on in Seattle, they got Jerome Baker, 27 years old. All they have really right now is Jerome Baker and Tyrell Dodson. I don't think that stays the case. Um, but as it is right now, I think Jerome Baker is uh, the guy to have there at linebacker. Um, on one hand, he's kind of like a Frankie Louvu type. And this was in Miami. All the stats we're going to talk about. But this past season, he had 78 tackles and only 13 games played. Uh, he only started 12, 13th got hurt. So a little bit of a, you know, maybe injury concern there. Does he come back healthy? But before that, um, the last two seasons, he's played healthy. He's had 100 tackles in 2022, 92 tackles in 2021. Um, over the last three years, he's had 11 tackles, which is great. I'm sorry, 11 sacks, which is great. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's maybe like a Jordan Brooks. Jordan Brooks was getting at the quarterback, too, and offering a nice uh, tackle floor. Hopefully that's what he can do in Seattle. Um, obviously, if they add somebody, it muddies up the water there for him. But Jerome Baker, I think, is a good, uh, you know, ad for not only Seattle, but a good ad for IDP right now. Steve, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, he easily becomes the starter, right? He's the middle linebacker now for the Seattle team because, right, you lose Wagner, you lose Brooks, so – um, great position for him, and we'll see how they, they perform in the draft and what they end up doing. But, yeah, he becomes a good a good potential LB1 because of just opportunities. Um, and he's going to be a name that not people are going to go crazy. Like, I think about my my home league that I've been doing IDP for over 10 years. Like, think about my, 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 my league mates that where they start drafting. He's not going to be a name that's going to fall early that I could possibly steal a little bit later, right? And now it becomes a potential LB1. So I think he's got great value because of the situation he is, he is in. So um, we'll see what how they use him, right? But I think, man, I just because of what he's done in the past isn't going to wow you. I think he can sneak in and be a, a nice little LB1 for you this upcoming season. Absolutely. Jerome Baker, still 27, still young, prime of his career. So wouldn't surprise me to have a solid year. Don't forget about an IDP. we got one more linebacker to talk about, a 31-year-old. Denzel Perryman got re up to the Chargers. He left Houston. I say re up because he was there, uh, originally got drafted there, and now is returning um, on a one-year deal. 
Uh, I don't know if he can stay healthy. Last year he couldn't. He only played 11 games. Um, you know, had some injury there. 11 games in 2022. So I, I don't know if he can, you know, withstand a whole season. If he can, I think he offers a solid tackle floor. He had in 11 games 76 tackles, and then 2022 in 11 games 83 tackles. So we're talking about a guy. He's full healthy here. He can eclipse 120, no problem. Um, you know, hopefully that's what he can do. I, I wouldn't, you know, go into a draft as my second linebacker and be happy. But if you can get him as a third linebacker and redraft or uh, for your dynasty as a one year stopgap, I think that's what you're looking at here. You know, I don't expect him to have many sacks, get at the quarterback. He's only had six and a half sacks um, through his 10 year career. So I'm sorry, his eight year career. So I'm not expecting on sacks, but uh, I think this, the tackles, he can eclipse 100 if he's healthy. Steve, what do you think about Perriman? Yeah, I mean, again, asterisk is, is him being healthy. He has not played a full season ever since being in the NFL. Like, his closest was 15 games, which was his best year. Um, you know, he had 154 tackles that season. So, um, if healthy, he shows you that he can get to that type of mark. But um, the health concern is his biggest issue. He cannot play a full season. So... My expectation is he's not going to play a full season this year, which means he is not a guy I'm drafting to be my starting linebacker on my team. Like you mentioned, he will be there for depth. Or if you're really deep league, you got 14 to 16 to 20 man leagues. Yeah. Perriman might have a little bit more value because of the potential of being the starting middle linebacker opportunities will be there. Um, but other than that, cool. Good signing. I'm keeping away. Yeah, I feel you. Unless you're in a deep league, probably not a name to consider. But don't be surprised if he has some value, uh, especially as a streamer next week if somebody gets hurt. Um, Denzel Perryman, 31 years old, back to the Chargers. Now moving on to our defensive line, defensive lineman, we have uh, we saw some big signings. I'm not going to get too much into Brian Burns, Wilkins, Daniil Hunter. Those are some big names. Obviously, their value is uh, you know that doesn't doesn't hurt you know going to this team. So still like them a lot. Big big three there. Um, moving, looking past that, we have Bryce Huff, 25 years old, got a big contract for Philly. Uh, we saw with the Jets last year in a limited role, he could really get at the quarterback, but really wasn't needed as a run, you know, run stopper. Um, hopefully he grows a little bit in that regard because without it, he's going to be pretty tough to, you know, roster with a high price tag, especially he gets this money. His household name value goes up. People are going to know him now. Bryce Huff, do you think he's somebody, Steve, that can uh, make that make that jump and, and become effective in the run game? Or, you know, what we saw last year as a, uh, you know, sack artist, is that kind of who he is you expect go, going forward in Philadelphia? Uh, Philly hopes he can stop the run. Um, but I think he's going to be more of a specialist. And, I mean, he's going to have opportunities because of uh, what Philly's trying to get rid of some of their defensive linemen already. They're trying to move, you know, Reddick and some of these other guys that, you know, and – we're replacing with players like Huff. Um, I think I will let my league mates draft Huff. I think people will go after it because they saw 10 sacks and they're like, oh, now he's going to Philly. They haven't, you know, you could you could take him all you want. I don't think his value is going to be any higher than what it was this past season. I just don't think it's going to happen unless he does end up with, say, 20 to 30 more tackles, right? He might have some more value. But um, other than that, I don't think their their value is really high. I think he was more of a – Desperate signing. There wasn't a lot of great defensive linemen in this this free agency class that you had without putting out a lot, right? Like, I, you know, I think he was overpaid, but, you know, the opportunities could be there. Reddick could be gone. He might have, again, an opportunity to be the starting defensive end. Um, I'm curious how they do play because they, they, they're a high rotation team anyways defensively. They they don't keep their linemen all. The, they like to keep them fresh. So um, he's got to have some big – Turnovers to, I think, have any value for most teams um, in the IDP world. So for me, again, sometimes you see these big free agencies. Yeah, like you mentioned, it's a big name. Someone's going to go after him because of that, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, like you said, a lot of money. Maybe that was a little bit excessive due to the timing right off the beginning of free agency off the bat. And I think a good point is they still have Reddick right now. So, right you know, now. you're hoping if you have Huff that they get rid of Reddick, it's only going to make things worse. You know, they could definitely keep, keep him as a role player if they do have Reddick too. So keep an eye on what happens there uh, in Philadelphia. Moving on, we're going to talk about Jonathan Grenard. Just got signed to Minnesota. Basically, him and Daniil Hunter did a swap, a jersey swap, really. 
uh, without a trade going down. This is somebody who had the best season of his career last year, really had a great um, you know, first three years, but put all the pieces together with 12 and a half sacks and 52 tackles over 15 games played last year. You'd like to think if he played those last two, he could probably you know, push for 14, 15 sacks and maybe 60, 60 or more uh, tackles. That'd be a really nice season. Steve, do you think uh, – you know, he, the, the D'Amico Ryan's effect, he was able to put it all together last season and uh, you're a little worried about him or do you think that, um, you know, maybe he can kind of hit those Daniel Hunter numbers and maybe not wholeheartedly, but somewhere in the realm of? I think he could do well. I think, you know, look, if you look at last year, he had 12 and a half sacks. The year before he was injured, um, didn't play a lot. And the year before that, he had eight sacks. So um, at least to me, two out of three years, you're eight or better yeah, I think he could still be that eight or better guy, um, which I think is perfect for him. I don't think he is a Daniel Hunter, but I do think his value is there. I think he can easily become a guy who's going to get you double digit sacks. So again, if you're going to get plenty of points for that in your your IDP league, um, absolutely, right? Like he's going to have that value. He got paid to be that guy, and um, you know, I I'm not a believer that when guys get paid, they're just going to be a slouch. Like, I just don't believe that. Obviously, there are teams that have dealt with that with certain players, but I don't think that's a true thing. I think these players get paid, and then they really want to honor that contract, right? Because there's always a second opportunity for another big contract. Like, these guys aren't just giving up. So um, I don't think the big contract is going to scare him away. I think he's going to have great opportunity, and I do. I think 10 to, to 15 sacks is doable for him because the opportunities will be there. And like we mentioned before, they have Van Ginkle. They could easily – kind of rotate them in and out if they need to, to keep them fresh for the season. So I do like that opportunity for him. Um, you know, again, if sacks get you points, I like him here. Yeah, me too. I do like him a lot. Grenard, solid player. He's not a Daniel Hunter, good point, but he's a good consolation there for Minnesota. So good get from there, uh, for, from their perspective. And I do like him in IDP as well too. Um, expecting him to build off this last season, even if it's with a different team. So hopefully he puts all the pieces together. Uh, moving on, we have Javon Kinlaw going to the Jets, 26 years old. He gets a little little um, you know sidekick next to Quentin Williams there. Do you think this move is going to help Kinlaw break out? I mean, he only had three and a half sacks last season. Uh, granted, it was only six games started. He played in 17, but only started six. Do you think – this move, you know, gets him first off the playing time that he needs, the opportunity that he needs to jumpstart his career, you know, really pay off on that upside? Or uh, do you think that, you know, three and a half sacks is not really much room to grow past there? It's tough to say because, you know, you're going from a, a San Francisco team that's pretty deep on that defensive line to a team that now just lost Huff, who he's kind of replacing. Um, but you got your, you got Quinn, Quinn Williams uh, as your defensive tackle, which only helps, I think, for him because he's getting a lot of the attention. So the opportunities could be there. As far as any value, I'm not really sure yet um, because he hasn't had a lot uh, to really show just because of what the situation he was in, right? Like it's tough to be a starter every single week when you've got players like Bosa, right? And you got, you know, you got some great defensive linemen to kind of compete against. So, um, I think he might potentially be a nice little steal coming into the season because his opportunities will be there. Um, so he's going to be somebody, I think he's going to be more on the waiver side. You know, the season comes in, he's probably going to be on everyone's YouTube channel that do IDP and like, Hey, to grab this guy, he's going to be, you know, because he, I think he'll be there, you know, give it a game or two. And I think his value will increase quite a bit. So right now, if you can pick him up off waivers, cause I'm sure that's where he is right now in your dynasty leagues and you have the potential spots before your draft, yeah, why not hold on to him? Because he has this, he has the opportunity to be the starter this season. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely has the potential to. Maybe he sees that through. Uh, would be good for him. And he's still young, 26 years old, has Quinn in there. So I think, you know, this move might help him out a little bit. Not sold yet, not somebody I'm banking on. But, yeah, take a flyer on him, I think. Or watch him in waivers if you're in a shorter league. Uh, moving on, we have Shaq Barrett, who I just wanted to mention, um, got signed to Miami, and this might not be, you know, the most sexy name. Didn't really uh, do much over the last two seasons. Only four and a half sacks last year. Um, but uh, you know, even at 31 years old, somebody who, if if Phillips 
uh, and Chubb were there to begin begin the season. And they might be, but probably not because of the injuries they're dealing with. Uh, I just think that Shaq Barrett, you know, is, is a not a household name at this point. Probably not somebody who's owned in Dynasty, but I think it uh, – given the opportunity to start beginning of the season, at least that he'll be able to put up some stats, you know, get to the quarterback, get those sacks. What do you think, Steve, about Shaq Barrett? Worth, worth yeah. a, a monitor going into next year? He's definitely going to be a rotational player, I think, for, for Miami. Um, hasn't been consistent as of late. He had one really amazing season where he had 19 and a half sacks, and that was it. Um, he got paid really well from that um, type of season. And then, yeah, Fortunately, he's a player that, like I mentioned, he just didn't really show up after that, right? He just never really kind of grew um, into the player that I think everyone had expected or hoped in Tampa. And, um, you know, he gets to stay in Florida. Good for him. You know, he gets to stay in that, that beautiful sunny weather. So I just don't know how much value he's going to really have. I think he's going to be more rotational, which means, again, as far as my dynasty or even redraft, I don't think he's somebody I'm considering. Um, unless, again, you're talking – injuries or you're streaming a player here or there um i've had shaq barrett on my team in the past in dynasty and now he's just sitting on waivers yeah i feel you could go that way especially if you're in a shallow league too i wouldn't surprise me if you had some some value there early on if those guys that i talked about miss chubb and phillips so definitely somebody who might be a common streamer beginning beginning of the year if they do miss uh we got another guy to talk about older here 31 as well uh, to Cleveland, re- Zadarius Smith uh, re-signed there. He's going to play another season. Um, I like him to, you know, have some some sack prowess. He only had uh, five and a half last year, but um, the year before that, Minnesota had ten. You know, in twenty twenty two. So I, I do think uh, there's a chance that he can come back and push towards ten, especially with Miles Garrett healthy there. I think there's a if you're in a deep league, like we said with. Um, with Barrett, probably somebody, unless you're in a deep league, you're probably not going to be honing in, looking at it all. But if you are in a deeper league, Zadarius Smith, does he intrigue you at all? It's got to be in deep leagues, man. It's got to be something where you're you're relying on sacks and opportunities. He does have those opportunities opposite of Miles Garrett because Miles will get the double team and Zadarius has the chance to kind of shine in those aspects. But he's too inconsistent. Um he might put up a, a week where he's got you double digits in fantasy, and then he's going to put up like two or three weeks where he's getting you a couple points here or there. So just understand, like, don't don't get too burned by him. Don't don't rely on him as a weekly starter. Again, filling in some injuries, maybe some some bye weeks or something into the upcoming season. Sure, he's got something there, uh, but he is an older guy. Um, He's going to rely on a lot of his technique and his, uh, you know, game film to kind of get past these offensive linemen. Um, smart, savvy player, but I'm not expecting much out of him. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention him. I'm 31 years old. Maybe we can count on him for one more season to get at the quarterback, have a bounce back season. Uh, one more defensive lineman to talk about on the docket here, and that's Chase Young. I'm a little bit bummed out. He signed a one-year deal. No, no surprise there. One-year prove a deal, but he went to New Orleans where they have Cameron Jordan, Carl Granderson. I just don't think that this is the place for him to break out. I was looking forward to him um, getting another year with San Fran. You know, having an off-season there, but it's not the case. He's going to New Orleans. To me, he's just a end. You know, end of the uh, draft a depth piece. Uh, maybe take a chance on. He gets a strong side of a platoon, but I don't see it here. I wouldn't count on it. Steve, what do you think about Chase Young? Um, I don't know. I'm at a point where like the name is more than what he's actually worth. Um, you know, he came into this league, showed a lot of potential, possibly, you know, a nice, you know, pro bowl every single year. And then something just hasn't clicked for him. And then on top of that, now you're in a team that realistically he's not going to be the starter. He's also dealing with a neck injury that right now is actually in his contract that if he can't figure, he can't rehab properly from it, the saints are prepared. They're safe on their end. They're not losing money. So they took them as a risk because there is there, there's some pretty good concern against this neck injury and in, in, in concern of the rehab. So um, and that could play shorten up his career and play a factor in how he performs the you know the rest of his season and of course going on to that. So um at this point, if you've got some league mates who aren't up to date, who just can't aren't currently, you know, those they just hear the name, right? Chase Young. Oh, it's Chase Young. I'm selling him if I can. Uh, but realistically, I wouldn't be mad at you if you put him on waivers. 
and just let him sit there and kind of see what happens. Because I think there's some, some great talent coming into this draft that you could pick up. Um, and there's definitely other options. I chase not in a great situation. And realistically, the, the neck thing concerns me as well, as far as what I've read. Yeah, I feel you. I'm not counting on it myself either. Uh, don't you know? Don't really need to worry about him right now. I I was a little bit bummed he went to New Orleans, but uh, what can you do? Yeah, definitely somebody whose name out, out produces their stats right now. So unless he proves it, uh, don't bite on him. I'm over him. Moving on, we got defensive backs. Uh, we have ten here to talk about. First one goes to Green Bay, leaves New York. That's Xavier McKinney, 24 years old. They really have nobody in Green Bay back there right now, so he's going to be a starter. Uh, it's his backfield really back there. And I think um, I was maybe a little bit more excited to see him return in New York. I, I knew what he can do there, but he is going to a different team. Last season, he had 116 tackles and half a sack. And, you know, you're not counting on him for sacks. Um, this is somebody who, you know, can get at the quarterback a little bit. It, not really. Uh, he's not really shown that to the to his, this point in his career. But the, the last season, the tackles were really there, 116. 2021, he had 93 tackles. The problem was his rookie year and the third year, uh, in between the nice years, he's had trouble staying healthy. He's only played six games as a rookie, nine in 2022 before you know having a great year and putting all the pieces together in 17 games, 2023. Um, you know, like I said, I, I'd like to see him stay in New York. It wasn't the case, but uh, I'd say 116 tackles, pencil him in for that. I don't think the upside's uh, much past that, but. I still think uh, we're talking about a top 10 defensive back here in redraft and dynasty. Steve, what do you think about McKinney? I like McKinney a lot. I really wish he had gone somewhere else, but I do like McKinney a lot. I think he has the potential. He's a good playmaker. Um, you know, he can get you five interceptions. He can get you a hundred tackles. Um, health is a concern every other year. He seems to be hurt. So hopefully this year he's not hurt again. That seems to be the trend. Um, but I think it's good for him in green Bay. I think actually he's really good because he has a good chance to, really shine. Um, I like this move a lot. Like he's going to, he's going to be one of my, my targets coming into the season. I think he, he's, he can easily be a top 10 defensive back coming into this, this IDP season. Super excited for him. I think a uh, really good opportunity. Um, kind of crazy that New York just kind of let him go. Um, maybe the injuries kind of scared them off a little bit and they didn't want to pay and spend the money. Obviously their money's locked up in their quarterback and stuff, but like every team is locked up their money into their quarterback so they should have been able to find a way but green bay did it green bay is not known for signing free agents kind of like your pittsburgh like they don't really go after players so to see them do that i think that was great for them because again 25 years old that's a young packers team anyways i think it's a, a smart move and i think it's gonna be good for him yeah i agree still top 10 uh defensive back idp uh when we're talking redraft Dynasty doesn't matter. I still think he's that, absolutely. So Xavier McKinney going to Green Bay should be a stalwart there for that defense. Um, next guy switching teams is going to be Jeremy Chin going to Washington, 26 years old. I think this is a good landing spot for him, even though it's a one-year deal. My question is with Chin, they have Percy Butler, who was deemed a starter towards the back end of this year. Uh, they have Reeves and then your boy Derek Forrest, who I know you like. Um, you know, is Jeremy Chin, is he going to be a, you know, 99 to 95 to 99% of the time uh, on the field snap count kind of guy, or do you think he's going to be a role player at this point? I don't know how this is going to play out. So Dan Quinn uses his safeties, especially like a player like Jeremy Chin, who the first two years was over a hundred tackles was more of a in the box type of player. I see two things happening. I could see him where they use him like Donovan Wilson was for Dallas where, or like Cam Chancellor was way back in the Legion of Boom days where he's going to be that more in the box type of player, um, really close to the line, stopping the run, making a couple big plays here and there. Like that's the opportunity that Chin is in. His concern is right now you've got other players in there, right? You still have, uh, Jabril Cox from previously from Dallas, who can be there. You've got Wagner, you've got, you know, Davis, you, you've got plenty of linebackers. So don't know if he's going to necessarily move into that type of role. And then, yeah, like you mentioned on the backside, technically he's not even considered to be the starter. So I'm curious how this plays out. I think 
if they put him into one of those roles where it's a Donovan Wilson slash Cam Chancellor role, he's sneakily going to be a really good defensive back this season. He's shown he can be a hundred plus tackler. Um, so I am curious. I mean, he's only on a one year deal, so they're not expecting much out of this. Like if they had said three to five year deal, then I'd be like, okay, he's going to be the starter. But one year, he may just be cut by the end of the training camp. Let's be honest. Yeah, I feel that. I'm not. I'm not counting on Jeremy Chin, somebody who probably is going to have to play hard the first couple of weeks, and I pick him up, you know. But uh, a lot of a lot of fluidity there with that uh, defensive backfield. Other guys who have played there, um, Forrest, Reeves, those guys scare me a little bit. It seems like they they pay homage to them. Um, they they you know put faith in them. So yeah, I don't know. Like you said, good point with the one year deal. Nothing's given there, so don't count on Jeremy Chin. But don't be surprised if he goes off and you're picking him up uh, early in the season. Awesome. So moving in, I really like this next guy, Kevin Byard, 30 years old, got a two year deal with Chicago um, to be a complimentary piece next to Jaquan Brisker. And I really like the signing because let Brisker, you know, get at the quarterback, drop, uh, go close to the line, help him run, run stopping. And really for Kevin Byard, he does what he's doing, you know, known for, known for it best is uh, being in the backfield and really cleaning things up back there. And was a ball hawk at one point in Tennessee. He had an interception last year, but those days of him getting four or five, eight picks are probably out the window. Um, You know, it doesn't really have to do that though to be, fantasy uh consider it he had 122 tackles this season um between split between tennessee and philly i I think if he can give me 110 tackles that you know it's a solid safety play i think that is the case here uh they do have from they brought in also jonathan owens from chicago and i think that's more of a depth signing yeah i think uh he's a starter next to brisker if he can give me 110 tackles i'm happy with that and that's why what i expect him to do um, yeah, he doesn't have to get the interceptions. Maybe he gets one or two, but I think, you know, wh- whether you're scoring be tackle heavy or big play, you know, big play uh, dependent, I think he's there's room for Kevin Byard in both those leagues, Steve. What do you say? Yeah, I agree. I, I'm a big fan of Brisker. I think it does not affect him. I think Brisker is still their better defensive uh, back back there. Um, I think it helps having Byard there because, again, leadership, right, help kind of improve Brisker's game. Uh, Bayard is absolutely the starter. Like you mentioned, Jonathan Owens coming from Green Bay to Chicago. Um, Owens really has no value right now in, when it comes to fantasy at this point. So he's just a name that got signed or, you know, got brought over. So for me, it's not a big deal for him. Bayard does have value. He can get you close to a hundred tackles. Um, I like this move. I think it's going to be great for both of them back there. Cause you also have Jalen Johnson now. So you sound like this bears defense. The more I look at it, with their linebacking core that they have with Edwards and, and, you know, and Edmonds, like they improve that defensive line a little bit more. Like this is going to be a top five defense coming into this season. And there's going to be a lot of players on this defense. That's going to be amazing for IDP. So for me, I think it was a great move for Bayard. I do. I expect him to probably have 10 to 15 less tackles than probably previous past. But I do think, actually, I'm the opposite. I think he's going to improve on his interceptions. Um, I think he can get a couple more out of him. I think it's just that young defense. Sometimes that youth around you just makes you feel younger and you play younger, and I think it's going to be good for him. And Brisker, I think, is still going to have strong value. I like a lot of the players on this this Bears defense. Yeah, I think so, too. It's a good signing. I think uh, Chicago led the league in interceptions the past year. I think the, with a signing like this, it helps uh, to duplicate that. So Kevin Byard, yeah. like him a lot. I think it's a good IDP play there in, in Chicago for him. Um, moving on, we have 26-year-old Chauncey Gardner-Johnson going back to Philly. Looks like he's going to start next to Reed Blankenship. Got a three-year deal. Uh, I'm torn on this guy. He had over 110 tackles just a few short years ago in uh, New Orleans. Wasn't able to stay healthy last year. I'm not sure what to take of it. He's young. I still think the potential's there. Not somebody who I'm going to, in a redraft, go out and you know depend on, but um, I think in shallow leagues, you can afford to leave this guy on the waivers, and y- he probably does hit uh, early on, you, at least a couple games. I don't know whether he'd be consistent or not, but I wouldn't be su- surprised if he had a big week one and he's a you know name household name in IDP community. Um, to me, I'm just not going to bank on it. That's just uh, the, the kind of player I think he is, is a volatile player. It's a volatile position to begin with, but I think he's a volatile player by the end of the season. You know, if he's up there in tackles, uh, top 10, I wouldn't be surprised. But And at that point, he would be rosterable. 
Um, but I just think this is a guy who I'm going to have to, if I have him next year, it's going to be through uh, waivers. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, definitely a waiver wire pickup, probably mid-season, a couple bye weeks or injuries you got to fill in. Um, look, CJ is, what, one season, I think, maybe, that he's played a full season. Like, he's been injured last year, only played three. The year before that was 12. The year before that was 12. Like, he hasn't really had a very healthy season into his sort of young NFL career. Uh, Blinkenship definitely has more value. CJ is more of a big play type of player. Like he's not going to get you a lot of tackles. He is only really valuable on a t- on a scoring system that's going to give you points for interceptions, defensive deflections, things like that. Like other than that, his value is very minimal. Like you're not going to get 100 tackles. You're not going to get a lot of sacks. He might get you three to you know three to five, three to eight interceptions, like kind of the range. But again, other than that, he doesn't have a lot of value. So that's too high of a risk. And even in me, where in my my league where we do give a lot of points for big plays, I'm still holding off because we still give value for tackles. And if you can't even get tackles, your interception's nice, but not enough. So for me, waiver streaming type of defensive back, um, and that's probably the only value he has. Yeah, I agree. Not banking on him. He'll have some big games there for sure. Uh, sure. Speaking of big plays. Somebody that's no stranger to them, but we saw a down year from this year, and that's Jordan Poyer. Jordan Poyer gets a one-year deal with Miami. He comes off a season where he did have 100 tackles, uh, one sack, which is fine, but kind of down for him. He didn't have an interception last year in 16 games, and really that's somebody who he is. He's a big uh, big play type of guy, getting forced fumbles, getting interceptions. Um, 2022, he had four picks. 2021, five picks. 2020, two picks. So somebody who uh, didn't get a pick last year, to me, that's an outlier. I think that was just a down year. Uh, I'm expecting 100 or more tackles uh, with a couple big plays for Jordan Poyer, and I think he's back on the map next year. Uh, really not looking forward to him being a, a dynasty play. Maybe you, you use him as a one-year stopgap. I wouldn't really count on much more than that. Um, but I do think next to Javon Holland, Jordan Poyer for a one-year deal, this could be a guy who – um, probably not banking on, probably going to be another waiver wire pick, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, hits consistently, Steve, what do you think about Poyer? Um, age is definitely a concern, obviously like how, you know, again, never really full seasons for him. Uh, he had a good season this season, um, more than he had in the past, but again, not a, a consistent tackler enough, more big play player than, than anything else. No interception this past season, which was kind of shocking because he's known for interceptions, um, which is his biggest value when it comes to IDP. So, um, yeah, I'm interested in how he plays. I think he's going to have to um, it's gonna take a little bit of time him transitioning into this this Miami team, but he's not going to be relied to uh, relied as the guy, which I think is great for him because uh, Holland obviously will be. Um, Poyer's now probably going to get a little bit more freedom where he can kind of be more of the ball hawk that he has in the past. Um, and not so much more relied on the run running game. So I like this a little bit better, but again, he's not somebody I'm keeping on my rosters. I'm not drafting him. Um, again, great player to kind of fill in a couple injuries. Maybe the matchup's great where he can add some, uh, you know, some extra points, but that's probably it. Yeah, I agree. You don't have to draft him, but he's going to be there. Maybe if you're in a deeper league, consider drafting him, but, other than that, you know, don't be surprised if you're picking them up in uh, waivers week one, week two. Could have some value there in Miami next to uh, Holland. So I do like Jordan Poyer maybe on a one-year one year deal there. Uh, moving on, we have a 30-year-old, Rayshon Jenkins, leaving Jacksonville, going to Seattle to play next to Julian Love. I like this pairing. You know, he, he was somebody, uh, Rayshon Jenkins, who can kind of do it all. I think Ju- Julian Love might be the better tackle play. But uh, Rayshon Jenkins, in his own regard, he had a, over 100 tackles the past two seasons, 101, 2023, 116, uh, 2022. Kind of does it all. He got a sack, you know, one sack uh, right on the money these past two seasons. He did have five uh, interceptions over this, the past two seasons. So somebody who can be kind of a ball hawking uh, safety back there, let Julian Love do some damage on the line and kind of make those big plays, but those big tackles. But I do think that Rayshon Jenkins has a place in the IDP community. I'd kind of say he's a back-end defensive back, too. Um, you know, what he was offering, it was stability as far as year-to-year. It wasn't uh, 
consistent all the way through the year for yep. production when, when it came, comes to Jenkins and J- Jacksonville, but he did have some big games. And by the end of the year, he's definitely a top 15, top 20 uh, defensive back. So I think he can continue that here at 30 years old. And in Seattle, I think, you know, they, they lost Jamal Adams, which is good for him. And he has a starting spot. Maybe give me 100 tackles and an interception in the sack, and I'm happy with that. What do you say, Steve? Yeah, he's he's a great tackler. Um, I loved him in Jacksonville. I had him in uh, my read. Actually, I had him in my redraft league. Um, I wasn't he wasn't my necessarily everyday starter, but he was a good fill in. I think, like you mentioned, he's he's a good mid to low um, defensive back too. Like that's kind of where he's positioned at, especially even with Love on the opposite side. I think that helps him out. Uh, good pairing. I think even in the NFL aspect, I think this is a great pairing for Seattle. It's a lot, a huge improvement going from Jamal Adams who. I don't know what happened. Just fell off, right? Like it's just it is what it is. It's sad to see, but like now you got an actual defensive player back there that's going to be consistent and be a good player. Like he can get some interceptions, he can make those tackles. Um, I think it's a great move, and I think he is somebody you should still draft. Again, not being my main starter at defensive back, but he can be a nice DB two. Um, you know, maybe a flex defensive player position every once in a while if you have to fill in for for buys or injuries but i I like him a lot he should be on your rosters at really if he's on waivers you should be picking him up right now right absolutely yeah i agree has high value uh high ceiling to low uh the high floor even so solid player rayshon jenkins go get him if he's available Uh, and crazy to think that we'd be saying he's an upgrade over jamal adams if maybe it was 2019 2018 crazy world we live in though but that's the truth of it is an upgrade there. We got a couple more three to talk about next one. I think this one's very sneaky and not somebody who needs to be drafted, but don't be surprised. Deshaun Elliott, uh, Pittsburgh made some great moves. I think Deshaun Elliott adds to that list, 26 years old, coming off a little bit of a down year. I expected more uh, as, as far as counting stats in Miami for Deshaun Elliott, even with Javon Holland hurt, he still only accumulated eight, 82 tackles in 15 games. Uh, I thought what we were going to get is more of his Detroit days in 2022. He had 96 tackles uh, only in 13 games started. So uh, I think Deshaun Elliott, you know, he has another game, another year in 2020. He had 80, 80 tackles and two and a half sacks. So this is somebody who I think is young enough and uh, has the track record to to make that jump again, um, going to Pittsburgh. They really needed, we really needed uh, safety help here in Pittsburgh next to F- Minka Fitzpatrick. And I think, Deshaun Elliott, he's a dog. He's a hungry player. I think he fits what Pittsburgh wants to do. He did have experience on the Baltimore Ravens, so they do have kind of a spy, you know, get inside the Ravens' head there by signing him. So uh, multifaceted on an NFL and an IDP, you know, uh, platform. I I like the signing for Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't think you're going to have to, you know, draft him, but I I do expect him to have some value, especially in two or more uh, defensive back, you know, rostered leagues, Steve. So what do you think about Deshaun Elliott? Somebody who can have value next year? Yeah. And let's be honest, Minka has had some issues being on the field, so he can be a filler for that. If he doesn't get the opposite, you know, starting opposite job of, of Minka, because you still got Kazee there um, that you really was in that backfield. So, you know, we'll see how the training camps play out and where he actually ends up being in the roster. But Elliott does have the potential to be the starter or, again, if need be, fill in for when Fitzpatrick unfortunately misses a game or two. Um, but, you know, 80, 85 tackles, that's kind of where I see him at. Um, you know, a couple of interceptions. He's going to be a nice low-end defensive back two, high defensive back three if you have, a, you know, again, deeper league, uh, more of an injury filler. He's somebody that... You could put on your bench and just kind of, you know, add them here or there if you need to. Um, it's not a bad move. I think it was good for for Pittsburgh again, like you like you mentioned. You know, being a Steeler fan, that like, this is a good move. They needed to make a play like this um, to help that that secondary. So I like this move a lot. Yeah, for sure. Sean Elliott don't have to draft him, but keep an eye on him. Keep him on your watch list. Good landing spot for him. Next is Cameron Curl, 24 years old, going from Washington to the Chargers here. I'm sorry, to the uh, Rams. He got signed to the Rams. All they have is uh, Quentin Lake and Russ Yeast right now. So as far as Cameron Curl is concerned, I'm going to pencil him as a starter there. Um, You know, obviously he got signed uh, on a two-year deal. That's the starting starting deal. But uh, I don't I don't think there's anyone really stealing his thunder there. Uh, That's kind of the same recipe it was in Washington. 
I don't I don't want to say that it's a better landing spot. I think he had the the you know the backfield the keys to the car to himself back there in Washington and he was able to get uh up towards the line of scrimmage and make some nice plays. Um kind of a you know not really interception, not 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 like not that kind of caliber player, but uh high tackle floor in in pretty big high tackle ceiling. He had 115 last year, 83 in 2022. Um, almost hit 100 in 2021 with 99. So even though last year was his first uh, season with 100 or more tackles, it seemed like year after year he was getting better. So, you know, one sack in those last three years is uh, pretty modest. It doesn't have to get five or six sacks. He's not a Winfield type of player. But I do think uh, he can offer 100, maybe 110, 120 tackles there. And if he makes a, you know, sack or uh, interception, don't be surprised, but don't count on it. I think Cameron Curl, I don't want to say he got better here uh, going to L.A., but I do think he's about what he was last year. Steve, what do you say about Cam Curl? Yeah, I like I like Curl a lot. I mean, I think he has strong value in, in the IDP leagues. Um, I think a low DB1 with high DB2 upside, I think that's kind of where I put him when it comes to that. He's not going to be the big playmaker, right? He's going to be your run stuffer. He's going to be the one supporting – uh, with great assist tackles and consistent tackles, um, especially if you're getting those type of points, he's going to have even better value. So great move, a good move for for the Rams, right? Improve that secondary. He's going to have to help with stopping the run now that they lost Aaron Donald. So his value, I think, increased actually a little bit better with that retirement. Um, so I like Curl a lot. I think he's going to be really good for them. And at the same time, they did have Jordan Fuller last year, who's the next guy we're going to talk about, and Taylor Rapp. Yep. So there is a good rap sheet, uh, you know, for back or lack of better words. There's a, a good track record there of, of safeties hitting an IDP. Uh, mm -hmm. So I do like that. He has that going for him. So, yeah, he was an, a DB1 last year coming in. So um, I'm not saying he's anything lower than that, but just I don't think the move, you know, uh, makes him top tier. But solid player there. I like uh, Cam Curl a lot. And then finally, I had mentioned Jordan Fuller going to Carolina. Um, he leaves L.A. to go to Carolina on a one-year deal. Kind of going to play, looks like right now, next to Xavier Woods, who's kind of had an up-and-down career there in Carolina. But I like Jordan Fuller. While he's not going to really get the quarterback, uh, he doesn't have a sack to his name in four years. What he does do well is he makes tackles. He hit 94 last year. Um, as a sophomore, his second season, he had 113 tackles. Like I said, not a sack type of player, not somebody who's making tackles uh, for loss. Um, not going to really get many interceptions. It doesn't really – oh, I'm actually sorry. He does He does have uh, seven interceptions in four four seasons, so he's not really a, a Kevin Byard. He's not a complete ball hawk, but he is uh, no stranger to getting picks. Seven and four seasons is pretty solid. You could probably pencil in an interception or two for Jordan Fuller, and I think uh, he's going to be on a, a bad Carolina defense, a bad Car Carolina team more so. So I think there's going to be a, a lot of opportunity for him. The defense is going to be on the field awfully a lot here in Carolina. So I, I think if he can give you the floor of what he did with the Rams, with the upside for a little bit more, um, that probably pegs him a, a little bit closer to uh, 100 you know, tackles. Uh, I think that's a fair gauge, 100 tackles and a couple plays here and there, maybe a couple interceptions. Uh, I think Jordan Fuller is could be a sneaky defensive back too this year. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to really invest in him and expect that right away. But again, one of these players who don't be surprised if it's week two, week three, Jordan Fuller has uh, 15 tackles in two games and you're picking him up in week three. So I think Jordan Fuller, this is a nice landing spot for him. Not much competition here. They lose chin. Uh, I like him for IDP, Steve. What do you think about uh, Fuller? Yeah, I think it's a good move. You got Xavier Woods, who's more of the in the box safety. So, you know, Fuller gets to really be the, I guess you would say the ball hawk on this defense. Um, so I think it's a good move for him. Like you mentioned, this defense is probably going to be on the field a little bit more. I think Carolina's offense does improve some, but we're not expecting much out of Carolina. They might win maybe one or two extra games compared to this past season. So the opportunities of being on the field is going to help. They're going to have to obviously stop the, the, you know, the run a lot more often. So he has some opportunities to get some strong, you know, eight to 10 tackles in, in a couple games here or there, which is a, a really good true potential because he should be able to get, uh, you know, on average, probably six to seven tackles a game. If he wants to get close to that 120, 130 mark, which I think is potentially where he could be. Um, I actually do think he's a good 
draft player. I think he's somebody you could draft. I wouldn't spend a lot, right? I wouldn't. If you're talking startup, he's definitely in the later startups. If you're talking redraft, get him a little bit later rounds, but I still would draft him. I don't want to leave him necessarily on the waivers if I don't have to, because I do think his value is there. I think he's going to get you that 100 plus tackles, you know, a couple of interceptions, maybe squeak in a sack. Um, but I think his value is really strong. I think there's a good move for him. Um, and he doesn't, you know, again, you see plenty of opportunities just because of this Carolina defense. Definitely a lot of opportunities there from Jordan Fuller. Good get uh, back end. Don't forget about him. If he's in the dynasty right now and he's not owned, maybe a good chance to get him right now. So that was our IDP, our de- defensive free agent uh, shakeup. You know, we're going to um, take a look at some things uh, coming next, whether it be free agency. Steve and I will get in the get in the chalkboard and decide what we're going to talk on next. But it was nice breaking down those IDP uh, headline news with you, Steve. Thanks for always coming on and being my co-host. Um, before we leave, Steve, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, not a whole lot. I'm super excited. The draft is coming. A lot of, you know, pro days have been happening. If you haven't watched or haven't had a chance, check out some of the highlights. Some of these college players, again, showing up and showing off how well they have done in their past season of what obviously their potential. And the other thing is, is something I wanted to mention, make sure you guys check out the IDP plus website. We have the rookie guide out to help you with your rookie drafts for your dynasty leagues. It's only nine 99 right now. Great price. It's going to help you guys with any of your drafts coming up. So make sure you check that out. I was looking at some past um, draft guys that, that we've done in the past and it's been amazing content. So again, get that leg up on your competition to help you guys out. Enjoy your March Madness. We, at the time of this recording, another, another uh, broken bracket right there with Kentucky losing. So, hey, enjoy your March Madness, everybody. Make sure you guys check out your brackets. Enjoy some 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 college pro days. I'm excited. You know, baseball's getting ready to start. There's a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. What a time! What a time for sports. Thank you for everyone who who was tuning in, uh, all our viewers and listeners. If you haven't followed us on Twitter yet, I am at Johnny Freakin F1. Steve is at AVG Joe's underscore FF. Thanks for rocking with us. We will see you next time. Uh, like and subscribe, and you take care. Enjoy March Madness. Bless up. <laughs>